<laughs> Hello YouTube friends. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. I hadn't planned to spend time in the garden, but this morning I went to the garden centre I like to go to. It's a nursery really rather than a garden centre. Uh, they grow all their own plants and so um, vegetables and tomatoes. I went for tomatoes and I always trust them because I think if they've grown them <laughs> if they've grown them there then they'll grow here. It's not that far from me and I'm quite high up. So what I'm doing <laughs> what I'm doing at the moment this is the strawberry bed from last year and it's uh, I um, I planted all the strawberry runners. I think I made a little video about it. In fact, I'm sure I did. I'll try and find it and put an iCard uh, uh, in the top right-hand corner. Um, and what I did was I planted on a lot of strawberry runners because that's how strawberries um, reproduce. They uh, send out a runner, which is like this long thing, with another plant at the end of it. So what I did was I potted them all on into little pots and... Now I've got twice as many strawberries as I need. <laughs> so what I'm doing now then, while they're still small, there are a few flowers on some of them, but what I'm doing is I'm weeding, really, really carefully weeding. That's a creeping buttercup. Uh, creeping being the operative word, creeps all over the place. Big old weed, that one. Uh, and while they're small, I can get in without doing too much damage to the plants that are there. But I'm also thinning them out because they're far, far, far too close together. Now this here, I'll try and get this one out with a bit of root on. This is my worst weed by far. This one, ground elder. I have ground elder growing in such profusion and the way ground elder multiplies, it sends out a a very, uh, can you see, a very long root like that and when I'm weeding it, if a bit breaks off like that, that bit will grow. So I'm putting these uh, not on the compost heap, I won't be composting uh, these um, roots at all because they'll grow on the compost heap and then I'll be replanting them and that's not what we want. So I'm doing two jobs here, I'm going through the strawberry bed to find any pernicious weeds but I'm also um, thinning out the strawberry plants and I'll show you what I'm doing with them in a minute because in fact I've got enough strawberries to have two beds this size and last year they were absolutely fantastic until Clara the hen found them and then I had to net them for her uh, because she found them and she thought they were delicious too in fact Clara the hen found the strawberries, the red and black currants, and the blueberries. Why is Clara the hen still alive, I wonder? don't know the answer to that one. She is very amusing, but she's also annoying in that I give them all really nice hen food, lovely, lovely, tasty hen food, but they would still rather eat, or she would anyway. She's the only one who does it. So I'm going to have to, and I did net them. After I discovered she was doing that, I put a net over them. So I'll do that again. Now here you see, I'll bring you in a bit so that you can see. There's one, two, three, four strawberries growing really, really closely together. And I only need one. So I'm going to choose the one I'm gonna leave. I'll leave that one unless it comes up with this one. No, it wants to come up with this one, that's okay. So I'm gonna take this strawberry out. And it's still attached to all the runners. I'll put it on there and I'll show you what I'm doing with those in a minute. But when Mark was here the other day, he said, what did he say again? That I need at least 15 inches between strawberry plants and this definitely isn't 15 inches. Now what was I just saying about Clara the hen? Hey come here, come on. Here she is. 
Now, about, oh, I don't know, half an hour ago, I caught her and put her back in the hen run. She doesn't like it in the hen run. She likes it out here because she knows that I'm digging worms up that she's going to enjoy eating. I know how she's getting out as well, but it is going to take quite a bit of putting her back again. Uh, it's going to take quite a bit of fixing the bit where she's getting out. I'll just go and put her back. Okay, that's Clara back. There's another weed, that's plantain, and that sends down a long root, a little bit like a carrot tap root. That's not welcome in here either. And last year, I planted sweet peas all the way along the back of this border. I'm going to do the same again. I've got the sweet pea seeds just starting off in the polytunnel. There's some more creeping buttercup. I'll have you up. And more and more. And still more. It's easy to get them out when they're small. Oh, and this is the other weed I've got a phenomenal amount of as well. Nettle. Now the thing about nettle is it's got very shallow roots. So you should be able to get it out completely, really. It's not a bad one to weed, it's just very, very prolific. It's more of that buttercup there. And if a strawberry's coming up with it, like that one has, I'll just weed it out, save the strawberry and plant that on. Oh, what a lovely work. So there's the strawberry bed at the moment. It's quite good to see it now, because in a few weeks' time, when I've got the sweet peas up behind them, hopefully that'll be uh, an abundant, fantastic, abundant bed with loads of strawberries. Okay then, <clears throat> so I've weeded through the strawberry bed. I've thinned out a lot of the strawberries. There's a bit of ground elder that, has, that escaped there with its incredibly long root. Look at how successful that weed is. And every single one of those little runners it sends out will be another ground elder. Not you though. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now then, I've got the strawberry plants that I've weeded uh, round and thinned out. They look like this now. And I'm going to pop them on. So in this pot here, there's some up to here about half garden soil. Now, I'm sitting in the pavilion and I hope this is the first of many, many, many times that I'm going to be sitting in the pavilion talking to you about my garden and about other things. Last year I lived in the pavilion pretty much. It was so brilliant. So when this was made two years ago, and I wrote about it in the little book that I've got, I made, it's called Last Homely House. Uh, and I, I, in it I tell people about how this particular part of the garden was made. I'm sitting on the site here of an old greenhouse that was uh, wooden and therefore very dangerous because the wood rotted and the glass broke. And so what I replaced it with was this pavilion. But in the base of that greenhouse was a soil that had been looked after and kept fertile for years and years. So rather than just cover it over with gravel, because there's gravel on the floor here now, we dug it all out, Mark and I and the volunteers, and stored it all in dumpy bags. And so what I've done here then, this is some of that lovely topsoil here. And then because we need to, excuse me Norma, hey, hey, come on, thank you. Make your mind up, where are you going? 
because we need to increase the fertility a bit, because it is only just garden soil. So what I'm doing before I put the strawberry plant in here, I bought this this morning, I've got some pelleted chicken uh, manure and seaweed, uh, which is very high in nitrogen. And I'm only going to put a little sprinkle in here. It doesn't need hardly any, just a sprinkle in here and on me. <laughs> then I'm going to get the uh, strawberry plant, which I weeded out. And then I'm going to top it up with this stuff, which is some compost that I bought. So this morning I bought two big bags of, um, it's called clover compost. But I only need two handfuls like that and not the whole pot full of the expensive stuff. And there, that's beautifully potted on. So I've got a big basket of them here. I'm going to go uh, carry on and do that now. And then I'm going to put them all down here and give them a good watering. And then I'm going to think about where I can make another strawberry bed in the garden. There's a lot of garden, but it's all pretty much spoken for. So, I don't know really. <laughs> They'll stay happily watered and looked after in this uh, system that I've got going here. It'll be fine. Okay, that's what I'm going to do now then. I'm going to enjoy sitting in the pavilion at five o'clock at night, dreaming of pavilion days, more and more and more of them to come, I hope. Yeah, so that's what's happening here, guys. How many are there? Maybe 15? Something like that? Something like that. So another job done. For now anyway. The next job here where this, this uh, where the um, strawberries are is to get the sweet pea bed ready. But the sweet peas, they haven't even started uh, sprouting yet, so we're not going to get too excited about them. That one was in a little tiny pot. Make a space for it. Oh, so lovely. Can you hear the lambs baying on the hill opposite? I mean, you can hear the road as well, and maybe the fishermen chattering. You know, there are other noises here that aren't quite so uh, um, peaceful. But if you just selectively listen, you can hear the rooks cawing. It's quite a noisy farm, this. They're all noises I've got used to, though. I had a great day today. I went to the nursery that I like to get my uh, tomato plants from and I've bought eight tomato plants. Let me see if I can remember what they are. There's a tomato called Gardener's Delight, which is a very small, thin-skinned, tasty, sweet variety and it grows a lot on one plant. So I've got four of those because those are probably my favourite tomatoes. Then I think I got two Sun Gold which are the same kind of thing, but golden. Uh, they may be even a plum tomato, I'm not sure. Um, I got um, one called Rapunzel. I got a tomato called Rapunzel. The idea being that it cascades down like Rapunzel's hair. I only got one of those, just as an experiment really, to see what Rapunzel's going to be like when we grow her. So I've got eight tomatoes in all and two cucumber plants, two different sorts of cucumber. Because when the cucumbers start coming, I just like to eat um, a whole one day in the salad or they go very, very, very well in a juice. Very good in a juice. I love my cucumbers. There's a bit too much in that one. Let's make that go into two. Doesn't want to, I don't want to burn their roots off too much. This stuff's very nitrogenous. 
but uh, and it was a, an impulse buy. I wasn't meaning to buy it, but there was somebody in the queue in front of me who had pretty much bought up half of the nursery for their garden and I was patiently waiting my turn to be served to get my bags of compost and actually sat down on the bags of compost waiting because it looked like I was going to have a long wait. I've just planted a nettle there. That's not a good idea, is it? <laughs> so I've sat down on the big sacks of compost patiently waiting my turn reading the bags next to me and there was this sack that says it's here it says seaweed plant fertilizer and it's a mixture of seaweed and poultry manure not that I need any I need to import poultry manure into the place but as I say it was an impulse buy there are two there are three in there actually Let's break those up. Sorry guys, the party's over. You're not going to grow good plants if you're all cheek by jowl like that. Trust me, you can still be friends. God, who, am I, who am I talking to? <laughs> I'm talking to the strawberry plants. So yeah, I've had the most glorious day. It's been fantastic. <laughs> I'm gonna have to fill some more of these up, aren't I? Yep, I haven't got anything like enough. There's two there as well. Well, you two are very good friends. You can stay there. Maybe, maybe my kids might like some strawberry plants. I'll ask them. We've got gardens. Yeah, maybe Anna would like some strawberry plants and Martha. Because I've probably got too many, haven't I? Yes. I have. Um, what else did I buy? I bought some um, cabbage plants rather than plant them from seed. <sighs> Can you hear that? Hey Clara. Hi Clara, how's it going? Going all right, is it? <sighs> Annoying hair. This is the third time today I've put her back. I should just forget about it, shouldn't I, and leave her. But soon she's going to have to stay out of the garden because there'll be so much stuff planted in here. What are we going to do with you? I don't want to shut you up. I know where she's getting out. It's going to take such a lot of fixing. You're quite a clever hen, aren't you? I'm going to put her back now. Come on. Clever but naughty. There's so much free range where you live. Why can't you just stay there? And say hello. Okay, there's Norma now. Just coming to say hello and good evening to you all. I'm going to do a big plan in my uh, gardening book so that these jobs, as they need doing, I can actually see what needs to be doing and what needs to be planted where. So I'm going to do that uh, soon. But for now, we're going in, Norma. Yeah, I don't know what you think about that. See, see all this grass here, Norma? Don't sniff any of it in, will you? 
There's a good girl. Otherwise, next time it's coming out of your pocket money. Well, that was all yesterday. And so here is the plan that I was talking about in my gardening book. Uh, the beds are numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I'm not drawing this out to uh, in the order that they are in the garden, just so that I can see what each of the raised beds has already got planted in and what I have planned to plant in there. And that what I'm working on there is the polytunnel. Uh, and so the tomatoes and the cucumbers I've written in there. And then these are all the things that are destined to go into the beds. It'll just make it easier for me to see what uh, what I'm doing, <laughs> possibly. I'm a bit late doing this, planting out my peas and beans and sugar snap peas and a few of the other things. I'm a bit late. However, last year I was far, far too early. So I'm hoping that um, they'll just catch up. So what I've got here now, I'm going to make some newspaper pots and today I'm going to plant courgette seeds. Now, there's a fail-safe. If these don't come or they're not ready in time, uh, there's a, the Holt Whistle Plant Fair, which will be coming up soon. I'll be able to get a few plants from there. In here, I've got my sugar snap peas. In here, I've got French, what are they? French dwarf beans. Uh, some of the other things I might plant today, that's a, another uh, courgette, zucchini courgette. Uh, and then I have peas here that were new by this year. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, they're new by this year. And then I've got, um, if I get round to that today, I've got some more cucumber, two different types of cucumber. I love cucumber. And then this is flat leaf parsley. Now, flat leaf parsley takes uh, <coughs> two years. It'll come up and you can eat a little bit of it that year, but the second year it's most vigorous. So doesn't that tell you that what you ought to do is plant it every year so that you've got a succession of sowing? Who didn't plant it last year? So I'm starting again. I've got no flat leaf parsley, which I eat by the ton. So anyway, I've got my system for making the newspaper pots. I think I did these last year, so they're the same. <laughs> And it's a bit quick and rough and ready. I don't. There's no um, no neatness about doing this. So um, we take one sheet of paper. Did I cut them in half? Do you know, I've got a feeling I did. I've got a feeling I did. In which case, I need some scissors. Just bear with me a minute while I go and get some scissors. Okay, I just fold it over and over and over and then of course it's hollow all the way through but I find the bit where it's not hollow there and then I just staple this I think I've made that a bit too narrow but I'll get into the groove in a minute but the idea with these pots is that you they just disintegrate into the soil when, uh, when you plant them out and the roots can just penetrate through the sides of the tube. So the way that I do this then, so there it is, it can send a nice long root down there now, but then also as it's damp, it can actually, the roots can come out through the sides. So when you're planting it out, you don't disturb it. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna go, uh, go on now and make I'll work out how many of each I need, but I need these for three separate sorts of seeds. For the peas that uh, come in pods, for the peas that are the sugar snap peas, and for the uh, dwarf French beans that I like. See, only three things I grow uh, like this. So I don't, last year I grew far too many. So I don't wanna go crazy this year. I'm just gonna make, I'll work it out now. And the way that I do this is, on the side of this while it's dry, I just write on the side of this what the variety is. 
So if this is going to be um, an ordinary pea, I'll just write P on there. And if it's going to be a sugar snap, I would just write SS. And if it's going to be a French bean, I'll write FB. It's quite s simple and quick. And it means that when I'm planting them out, I know exactly what they are instead of using plant labels. So I'm going to do that now. I've got my trays here. I've got these. I've got two of these. These are just such brilliant things. And I'll tell you what they are. <laughs> Whoops a daisy. Years and years ago when my children were really little and they went to the little school in the village. Now, all the washing up in the kitchens now is all done with um, dishwashers and, you know, people aren't standing washing things up. But this was the big tray that all the kids' glasses would go in and they would lower this into the hot soapy water and jiggle it around and pull it out again. And then they were chucking two of these away. Well, not when I was around they went. So I put that there and I'm just going to fill this now with, um, with little tubes of soil. I've got this really, really nice uh, clover compost it's called. It's the one I buy. It's, I buy huge big sacks of it and maybe four a year and they do me for all my seeds. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to do that and it's going to be a load of fun. So I've got all of those done and now uh, I'm going to do these. I'm going to fill these little pots up and I'm going to plant some of uh, these courgette seeds. I've got two sorts and I'm going to plant these uh, courgettes. I need eight courgette plants. They're a bit fussy, tricky things to grow uh, courgettes from seed. But we'll see. We'll see how we go. Okay then, so... I haven't got any plant labels. I must have them somewhere, but I can't find them anywhere. So I'm just going to write on the pots, courgette. That'll do. And a little pot like this, and I'm going to put maybe... Do you know, it's very, very expensive seed. Am I going to put two in there or one? No, I'm just going to put one. Hope we get a decent plant out of this one. Okay then. So this is half a packet of seeds because I do a seed order with my friend. There's one. Bye bye. And we um, we share seeds because you don't need a whole packet of some things. So that's what we do. So she's got half a packet and so have I. So one, two. So there's five of those. There we go. As simple as that. So there are ten courgette plants there. I've got space for eight, and that's actually too many. I may not need that many. I may put half that number in. But they're sown now, which is good. And now I'm going to do these cucumber. Uh, let's see, what does it say about these? It says slugs are a major threat. So it's trying to sell me some uh, slug treatment here. Okay, so um, now, great. So we'll just write cucumber on here. And this one is called Muncher. <laughs> so this is the cucumber. No, I don't want... Um, what should I do? I think I might plant two in there, because there's quite a lot of seeds here. And we'll thin to the strongest. That's something, uh, a good thing to do sometimes. And so I've got two cucumber plants already that are already up. And established. How many cucumbers do you want, Kate? Five. So that's one, two, three. We'll just thin to the best. Four. 
five. That'll do. Right, boing, boing. So that's the cucumber done. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five's enough. We'll save that seed for next year. That's the cucumber then. So I had to stop a little while ago because a friend came to visit me. So we had a cup of tea and a bit of a nasa. And Eileen, I'd opened the gate a couple of days ago and let Eileen out into the garden. She just likes to eat the grass and potter about. But, and I'm sitting outside, as you can see, well, she, Eileen came right into the pavilion and properly attacked my friend. Properly went for her. So I'm afraid I had to catch her and stick her back in her, in her run again. I was going to take her for a swim later. I'm not sure I can be bothered now. Bad girl. Hey, Rocky. It's all right. You can come and eat it. You'd rather I close the window, wouldn't you? Yeah. Okay. Ha, ha, ha. 